Welcome to our class. Hey y'all, I'm Brittany Louise uh, from Tombow and this is Smitha. She's gonna be teaching your class this afternoon. Um, Smitha is one of our design team members. She's been part of the Tombow design team for many years now. And she is going to teach you guys all about our brand new ABT Pro alcohol-based marker. Um, make sure in the chat that you tell us where you're from. We love seeing where you guys are from. Um, I will be answering questions in the chat uh, throughout the class, but uh, we'll also um, stop Smitha every now and then, and so she can answer some of your questions too. Um, yeah, oh, we've got people from all over Maryland, New York, Las Vegas, Texas, California. Oh my goodness, it just keeps coming in. Smitha, you have a lot of people here with you today. <laughs> So it looks like, yeah, it looks like so many people are here. That's awesome. Um, so again, you guys, this is Brittany from Tombow. I will be helping to answer your questions. And Smitha, our design team member, is going to be teaching you all about our brand new ABT Pro alcohol-based marker that is available at Michael's. Um, it looks like we've got a lot of people here. So uh, Smitha, I'm gonna go ahead and let you take it over. Okay, hello everyone. I'm Smitha Kati. I live in Minnesota. And I'm, not, I'm so excited to see all of you coming in from so many different parts of the United States today. So I've been a crafter and self-taught artist for a couple of, for many years now. And most of my time is spent with my kids around. So I do simple doodles. I do simple illustrations when I get time. And today I'm excited to share two cards with you. And both of these are gonna be using the Tombow's ABT Pro alcohol-based markers. So this is a 12 pack of the markers. And I love that these are pre-selected the colors. The colors are already there. It's a palette of colors that go well together. And sometimes you might just challenge yourself like a fashion palette. I'm gonna draw flowers with them and just think out of the box. So let's just get started because we have two cards to make today. And these are the markers. These are Tombow's ABT Pro alcohol-based markers. They've been out a while and now they're available in Michael's stores which is just so exciting because there are so many colors and I'm sure you're all gonna enjoy all of them. Today I'm gonna to be using exclusively the fashion palette, but what I'm teaching, you can use any kind of art materials you have. If you have the regular dual brush pens that Tombow carry, those are the black barrel ones. These pens will work if you have color pencils or any other markers, any kind of color sub coloring supply will work for this. Just have fun and enjoy, and we're gonna create two cards along the way. I'm using alcohol-based markers today because I like the colors. And I like that these colors are very, they're very rich, they're intense. And I'll show you how by first creating a quick color sample here. So like I said, this is the fashion palette. It's meant for illustrations like fashion, design, people. But I thought I'll do some flowers with it because it has beautiful pinks, reds, and a nice green. Now, each ABT Pro marker comes with two tips. There is a brush tip, which is very similar to the dual brush pens tip if you've used it before. And there's also a chisel tip. The chisel tip is great when you need to cover larger areas or also when you need to add like smaller details, like thinner lines or small, small dots. I might be going too fast. Just tell me to slow down if I am. But I like to use them basically for these three designs. And I'll show you it again with the red in a larger scale. So with the brush tip, you can do thin or thick lines. I like to use it for large coverage as well. And you can see the colors are so vibrant. That's the thing about alcohol-based markers. The colors go on really dark and they stay saturated. So you can, with the brush tip, you can draw thin lines as well, or you can draw thicker lines if you use the entire width of the brush tip. And like I said, you can draw bigger shapes. With the chisel tip, the chisel tip, you can just press it down and you get a nice thick, even line. 
or you can go over it and it gets an even color. If you don't want to see the streak marks, you just have to go over it once more and it dries really super smooth like a block of color. I like to just flip the chisel tip around and draw thin lines for my illustrations or just draw small dots. You can press it down to get bigger dots or do smaller dots. So that is a couple of ways I like to use them. These are just basic strokes that you can use. But before I start, I thought I'd just show you the entire color set. This is this is PN15. This is a nice black. I like doing my card sentiments with this. This is a gray. So I'll just keep coloring in the colors here. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the chat right now. And I think Brittany can tell them to me. This is a PN5. Smitha, do you want to talk about the differences between alcohol-based markers and water-based? Yeah, I thought I saw the question too. So water-based markers and so I'll compare the dual, these are the dual brush pens by Tombow. These are the ABT Pro alcohol-based markers, again by Tombow. They are very similar to look at, look at, except this has a gray barrel, the body, and this has a black barrel. These dual brush pens are water-based, and these have been around for much more longer than the ABT Pros, and these are water-based, which means if I draw something and paint with it with water, you will see the color spread. Or if you just leave it and drop some water on it, you will see the water spread. The alcohol-based are not water reactive. So if I draw something with it and then later uh, paint over it with water, that is not gonna spread. And the colors are actually pretty similar. The water-based markers come in 108 colors. There's 107 in a colorless blender. The same with the alcohol-based ABT Pros. They also come in 107 colors and a colorless pen. So the colors are very vibrant in both of them, but the water-based react with water and the alcohol-based do not react with water. Again, when you do the water-based illustrations, you wanna use an oil-based pen. With the water, with the alcohol, with the alcohol-based ABT Pros, I like to use the mono drying pen so you can draw your illustrations on top of them. I'll give you a closer look and they won't bleed or smudge. So the tips in both of the pens are actually pretty similar. Again, these two have brush tips, the alcohol-based markers as well as the water-based markers. But on the other side, we have a chisel tip for the ABT Pros, which is a nice difference. You can draw thin lines, and like I said, you can color larger areas. Whereas the dual brush pens, they come with a marker tip. So the marker tip is good, again, for drawing lines and adding small dots, but you won't be able to color a large area. You'll probably use the brush tip again for that. So I'll just quickly finish my swatch here. And you can go ahead with the questions if you have more questions. So like I said, this is a pre-selected color set. This is 12 colors here. And the paper I'm using today is actually a mixed media sketchbook. This is a Strathmore sketchbook. This is mixed media with a vellum surface. You want to use any kind of paper that is not very absorbent. If it's very absorbent, the ink will just take more, it'll, it'll soak up more ink. So I like this mixed media for my alcohol illustrations, but you will need to keep in mind, this is another one that I've done alcohol markers, that the marker will bleed through. All alcohol markers will bleed through. So when you make your illustrations, just keep that in mind. And I'll show you how that affects our card making as well, because you have to cut a paper, I'll show you. Let me just uh, not digress and continue with my, my color swatch. This is a beautiful green. And I love this green and pink combination especially. And I think for flowers, they just, they just work very prettily. There is a purple. This is the P606. And again, there is a brown which is P879. There's the blue, P1. 
526. The red. This is P847. And I skipped out a light. What did I skip out? I have three. I skipped out this blue. <laughs> and the blue here, which is P535. So I will be using almost all colors in today's cards. So let me just step into the card. So are you guys here to learn more about the alcohol markers or are you interested in just making the cards? Cards, okay. I see cards. So today I have two examples. Both of these are a larger size card. So regular cards are like, these are four and a quarter by five and a half inches. But this is the larger size. It is five inches by six and a half inch. I'm just using pre-made pre cards. These come with envelopes. You can buy them at Michael's store. And I have two examples. In this example, I'm just gonna draw a shape and color directly on the card, but you will see that it bleeds through on the other side. You will see. So I just wrote thank you there as well. And then for this one, I didn't want the other side to show through. So I cut down some pieces of paper from the same mixed media sketchbook I was using to be slightly smaller. And I'm just gonna adhere that onto the card front once it's colored. So let's start coloring. Let's start with the simpler one. And I like to actually do my sentiment first, which is thanks. And whenever you're working with alcohol markers, it's a good thing to actually keep something underneath your piece of paper, just so that you don't stain your surface. So the card dimensions, this, this card is five inches by six and a half inches. And the same thing, this is also five by six and a half inches. So this insert is just about quarter inch smaller on all sides. To adhere the card, to adhere this onto the card base, I'll be using mono dots adhesive. I like this adhesive because it starts nicely, it holds the paper in place, and it's easy to use. So let me first draw and then we'll just adhere it into place. So I'll start with the sentiment and I'm using the brush tip of color PN15. You want to center your sentiment and if you're a little unsure about it, make sure you use a pencil. This is the Tombow drawing pencil and this is a 3H value, but it won't be seen on video. So I'm gonna to go to a darker shade. I'm gonna use a 4B so you can see it much better and just write out where I think I can. I should start and probably end. So I think that should be good. I'm gonna eyeball it today, guys. So, because it's gonna take me time to erase that, I'll take another piece of paper and we'll just eyeball it and center it as we go. So press down lightly for a thin line, press down firmly for a thicker line. That's brush lettering. And I'm just gonna add an H an A, an N, okay. So I have, so I like to see how much space I have. I don't have much space, so I'll squish my S in a little bit. So it fits in there and it's almost center. We can add our flowers around it to make it balanced. So that is my sentiment. You can use any sentiment you want and work slowly so that you get even alphabets and it's evenly in place. So I like to use my colors and layer them for the flowers. I'll start with the pink, which is P772 if you're coloring along. And I just add small petal shapes. Nothing, no grand logic in my flowers actually. Sometimes I just add squiggles, something that looks like a flower in general. And I like to add my colors in blobs of three. So if I have one, two, I want to add at least one more, three. These are just like small dewdrops. And then maybe add another one here. And I'll add some more shadows around it afterwards. And then let's reach for the pink. Uh, let's reach for the blue, P526. Uh, let's start here. I'm just doodling flowers with the brush tip. 
And sometimes I like to add half flowers here just to create a nice floral arrangement. And I'll draw a leaf in blue as well, because why not? All right, the purple comes next. And I'll draw a purple flower here. Okay, I'll slow down, sorry guys. Just add some squiggles if you need to, or these are like buds to me. So I have a couple of large flowers in the center area. Those are what grab your attention. Everything else are just fillers, like in a flower bouquet. So I have one, two, three, and we have the red as well. So for the red, I've actually used pink and red together. So I'll start with the pink. This is like a rose. And I go around it. And then another one around here. They're just strokes. It's kind of pressing your, here, let me show you in slow motion. I just use my brush tip. I start at the top and press it down. Start at the top, press it down. Start at the top, press it down. And just do that in a smaller scale. And that's kind of my flower. In other areas, I go around like creating a petal. You can add a little heart shape if you want to at the end or just keep it circle. These are very small in size. So whatever you feel like doing, it won't show up if you make a mistake. So it's just fun. This is my color stress buster time. Most of the times I have my kids running around or I have like a TV show blaring of theirs and I just tune it out and draw flowers. So it doesn't have to be perfect. The idea is just to make something colorful to go around the tanks that looks like flowers. So once you have all of these, I like to add in the leaves first before I go in and start adding more details. Adding leaves is like basically how you enhance any floral illustration you have. Just drawing flowers looks pretty, but adding the leaves just brings it to a whole new level. And leaves are what I actually add more of sometimes. So these are my flowers and I'm gonna add three leaves. And I have the leaves kind of popping outwards and they're just a long elongated oval shape. There's no signs in this. And this is also a time that I take to make sure that everything gets centered. So I have about a finger and a half space this side. So I need to fill in more here. So I'll just add the green there. Then add another small green leaf here. A pop of green here. And some more greens. I kind of create whimsical drawings. So my leaves are not all green. And I'll create, I'll add some more leaves with gray, but let me just wait for all of you to catch up. I think I'm going too fast. And is there any other questions you have for me other than slowing down? I saw the slow down quite a bit in the chat. Not seeing any questions. Jen says it looks great though, and I agree. Thank you guys. Can you reshow the rose? Yes. So for the rose, I'll, let me show in a darker color too. I just start with a circle. Let me show a bigger one, in fact, so you can see it clearer on the camera. So I just start with a circle. And again, with the brush tip, I just give lines that overlap. So if this, if this petal ends here, I just start the next petal here. I start the next petal earlier, next petal next and then next and that's about it try to keep your petals odd you don't want the you don't want the petals to be like all touching each other uniformly that'll make it look childlike just by overlapping them slightly gives them a nice different rose like look and for the leaves i didn't do anything much i just drew one line another line and since, the, the, since my leaves were so small, they basically filled up. Otherwise, you just go in and fill in the color, and that's it. I've just drawn two lines and filled it in. You can have smaller ones as well. 
I like using the gray for the leaves as well. It just adds a nice sophisticated look to your illustration. So I'm gonna start adding some more gray leaves now. I'm just varying the shape here. So my first green leaves were long and thin. I'm gonna keep my gray ones kind of sharp and stubby, but again, oval shaped. The leaves are just two strokes. You go up and go up again. And since this is large, I need to color it in. But if it's smaller, they kind of meet themselves and that's the leaves. For the gray, uh, for the gray leaves, I'm just adding them again to fill in now, to fill in any area that I see that looks empty. So this area looks empty. I'll add some small gray, gray leaves there. This one looks, I'll add two just falling out. And I will add stems or stalks to them, but first we'll just draw the leaf shapes. Over here, one more, and over here, one more, maybe here, and here. I've never recreated an illustration of mine, so I've already started to you know, stray away from it. Okay, so now that we have a rough idea of where everything is, I wanna add more dimension to my doodles. Even though these are simple flower doodles, you can see this one looks really flat, the flowers, whereas the one that I made for the illustration, the final illustration, there's more depth to it because I've layered my colors here. So to do that, there are two options. Like for the blue here, since the pack came with two blue colors, I layered the colors. Alcohol-based markers are very easy to layer and the colors will sit on top of each other, they won't blend. So again, with the brush tip, I'm just adding simple strokes coming outwards from the center of the flower. Nothing else, just very simple strokes. Again, this is my center of the flower. I'll add maybe two or three strokes per flower, and that's it. I might add a bud there, and I'll just add one stroke for the leaf that I've drawn there. For the pink, there's only a red or a pink in the set. In the set. So what I do is, I just layer the pink on top of the pink a couple of times, and that adds nice darker shade to it. So for the pink flower here, I'll just add one pink. So I just added a darker center in the same shape. It doesn't have to be the same shape actually, it can be a little different. We just try to add in the center of each petal, another stroke. Just like that. One more, one more. And then for our bud as well. For the rose, I will use the red. So for the rose, I use pink with the red. And again, I'll use the same strokes that I showed here. I'll use that on top of the pink. So you will see a little bit of the pink through and a little bit of the red. And that just adds more interest to it. You can also vary the thickness of your flower. There's no science to this. You just want to make it look flower-like. Same thing over here. And just adding more details on top. And for the pink flowers, I'm actually gonna go in and add a third layer of color in the center. So the alcohol markers are great because the paper does not pill no matter how many layers of color you add. If you use a water-based marker and you keep adding layers like this, the paper will start to pill and you'll start, start seeing little bubbles forming. But with alcohol-based markers, you can go back numerous times and just keep layering color and make a more intense shade of the original color. So this is just one marker, but I can create so many variations in color just by one marker and a little bit of patience, which is so much fun. So you can see here, if I'm holding it correctly, there. You can see a little darker center for the pink flowers, and that just adds so much more detail and depth to it. All right, now let's go to the blue I've done, and let's do the green. For the green, actually, I'm gonna add the gray. I'll add the gray color as details. And since my leaves are pretty small, instead of using the brush tip, I just flip it over and use the ch chisel tip. And I use the tip of the chisel tip. The tip of the chisel tip, <laughs> sorry. So I'm just using this corner to draw thin lines. And that's it. So what I wanna do with this is, I wanna kind of make the leaves look like they're popping out from somewhere. So 
Let me show you in the larger scale first. I realize it now. So I'll draw the darker line and kind of drag it down, if that makes sense. So that it looks like it's coming out from behind the flower or it's coming through a bunch. It, it forms like a small bunch of berries or leaves or anything else. And I'm not adding much details. I'm just adding one stroke of dark onto the little leaves. I don't know if you'll be able to see that here. Maybe I'll use a darker black today. It'll be more visible on the camera. So I'm using the black chisel tip. I'm just adding thin lines and kind of dragging it down and drawing a stalk to attach them to the flowers, if that makes sense. I'm doing this to all of the leaves, the green leaves, as well as the gray ones. And that again unifies everything together. If you don't feel comfortable doing this with the chisel tip, you can also use the mono drawing pen, like I said. The drawing pen actually comes in thinner, uh, in thinner tips. There is a 01, 03, as well as the 05. So it comes in a three pack like this. And this is one of my most used pens. And my daughter likes it and she tries to steal it from me and I catch her every time trying to use the number five one especially. So this comes in various thicknesses. So you can use this instead of using the chisel tip if you're using a black especially like the zero one, it's a really fine detail. It's beautiful on top of the card. I'll just go ahead with my chisel tip since I've started it, but you can use anything that you feel comfortable with. And I think that's all of the leaves here. Since I have my black out, I'll start adding centers of to the flowers, just small oval shapes. And for the purple flowers, I'm using my black to also add a few strokes since I didn't add a layer of purple on top, I'm just using the black to add a little bit of detail. Nothing too dramatic, just, just some black on top of it. The black will also come to the center of the red flowers. Just small strokes. So the way I put the black in the center is like one, two, three, and that's it. It's like a small set of lines that form a V. I'm finding it very, very hard to describe my strokes today. I don't know. They just seem so simple, but when I try to put it on paper and tell you guys what to draw, I realize I need to pay more attention to describe it. Sorry, guys, I'm trying my best today. For the green, this is a P177. I'm going to go over the pink and give the P117. That'll be the center for the pinks. And I have one more here. And I think that's about the pinks. What else flowers do I have? Oh, I have to add red here. Sorry, I forgot to add the red to this little buddy. And that's about almost, we're almost done here. So you can go in, I'm gonna go in with the zero one pen. And for the flowers, maybe you can draw a little doodle and join them together. Like just draw lines for stalks. And at the same time, draw little dots to the centers of each flower. You can use the pen or the chisel tip. I'm going back to the chisel tip because it's much faster with it. I'm just drawing little, I'm just tapping it up and down to draw little dots. And now I wanna fill in the whole area. Like if there are little gaps in between, I just use the green to add dots in between. Just, I'm just tapping the green. They're like little baby breath flowers, kind of that. And just add them falling off the edges if you need to. Gives the whole illustration a nice finished look as well. I like the pink the most. So I like to use the pink to add more little dots as well. You can add dots in groups of threes if you want, or you can just haphazardly add them. It just, in the end, they all tie together and form a nice floral illustration, like a floral bouquet. They come together. So this is how this card turned out. I was talking and drawing and I'm kind of proud of myself because I can't talk and draw all that well. And the reason I like to uh, draw my illustration on a different piece of paper is the paper will, the color will bleed through the paper. Not only that, if you feel like once you're done with the illustration, it's not quite centered, you can always just go in and do a quick trimming of the paper. You can just trim off a quarter inch on this side or what you need on the other side. 
and you'll be sent and you can just center the design onto a blank card. So I'm leaving it today. I think it's pretty centered. I'm not a perfectionist when it comes to that. And I'll fold my card. And to adhere my card down, I'm using mono dots adhesive. So I just flip the top, flip it over. It comes with a nice grip over here so you know where to place your finger and just apply the adhesive from end to end. Go down and down. All four sides. I like to add a little in the center. And my head might come in the screen now as I come in the center of this. I think that looks good. And there is the illustration. And that is my card. I love having cards at home. And especially thank you cards because I used to give these to my kids' children when they used to go to school full time and they had, you know, all activities. So we used to give out thank you cards so many times and I always have a stash of them. And this is how we started. So today's was a little more busy. Some days you can have more white space if you need. You can make the illustration even more minimal if you want. Just enjoy and have fun. So let's move on to the second illustration. Are we doing good on time? 3.30, okay guys. Any questions so far? Should we just start the second one? Please slow down. Yes, I will slow down. I'm sorry. Do you need to do you need me to repeat anything from the first card? I think you're good, Smitha. Okay. I see please slow down, but then I also see other questions. All right. So I'm going to start the second card, and this is a five by six and a half inch card. And this paper, this is a recollections brand card. It's pre-made card and the paper is very smooth. And I found that it's very, very nice with the alcohol markers. The al alcohol markers sit nicely on it. It will bleed through, but that's fine. You just see the reverse of the design there. So guys, if you are unable to finish the entire video or if you want to catch it up later and redraw this, Michael's will have it on their channel tomorrow. I think after 24 hours. So make sure to go by and check there. So let's start the second one. For the second one, you can choose any shape you want or, or you can draw a circle. I think I'll have a heart self today, just make the same design. So what you want to do is choose the center and use the pencil to sketch it out first. So here we go. I like this card a lot because it's a very simple design. You can make it a heart if you're making something bridal or if it's for Valentine's Day, you can make it a square. You can make it a, a diamond shape, you know, any kind of shape. And the shape adds so much of beauty to the card. So I'm just gonna quickly erase some of my extra lines here. And then we start drawing again. Yes, you can trace the heart, which would have been smart of me to do ahead of time, but we'll start with the flowers here. So in, in this card, I have the sentiment in the center, which says, thank you. And you can letter that with the mono drawing pen. Let me just start with that first. I'm gonna use the 05 thickness. This is a good thickness for drawing a sentiment. The thinner ones are nice to add details on top, but let's start with the thank you here. And I'm just lettering it directly onto the card. So, I know I have this much space, so I kind of leave a gap here. I'll give a swirl there. That's my thank you. And you can leave more space around the thank you if you need to. And this is almost centered. I probably can add another doodle here to kind of make it evenly spaced. Then let's start with the flowers. Again, the pink, P772, I love drawing with pink, especially flowers. I just feel they look so pretty and dainty. And this, this set has a, a set of 12 colors that all go together so beautifully. If I was to sit by myself and just pull out colors, I waste so much time trying to choose the colors. So by limiting myself to just 12 markers, I actually get more illustrations done, which is kind of contrary, but it works very well for me. I like using 12 packs more than using all markers at, at once, especially. Okay, so let's start with the pink flowers again. One large flower always. 
So a heart shape, another heart shape, another heart shape, another heart shape. That is my first flower. That is gonna be the largest flower. And that is gonna be my focal point basically. The rest I'm gonna add are gonna be half flowers. And I'm gonna use the heart shape to define how I place them. And that's what's so much fun about this little card. The heart shape turns up really sweet at the end. And form a visual triangle and draw our second, a third petal, a third flower. So we have three pinks and that forms a triangle nicely on our design. So first we're gonna draw all the large flowers and then we'll come back and add smaller things to fill in the heart. Here, you can see the card here. Okay. Next, I'm going to be using the blue, which is a P526. And again, I'm using just the shape of the, let me show you, I'm just using, using the shape of the heart. So if my heart was like this, I'm using this line itself as my guide of where and how my petals look. So I place them right along that curve so that the, the heart shape is well defined. I'm just gonna do that in a smaller scale over here. Again, three uh, blue flowers. And again, I'm just, I'm not even using a heart shape this time. Simple oval doodles. And over here, one, two, three, and one more, one, two, three. I like adding the flowers in threes or fives. And since this is a small scale, I think threes work well today. I'll wait for everyone to catch up for a second. And for this, for the blue flowers, all I did was, I just drew simple oval shapes. You can draw heart shapes or just oval shapes. That's it. They look like half flowers and they need to just fill the heart. You just need to create a heart full of flowers, like a bouquet. And here's a close up of what we're creating. Once you have the larger flowers in place, you'll realize it's much easier to fill it in. So now with the red, this is the P847. I'll start here at the tip because I want the heart shape to be well defined. So just one and two, just two strokes, it's a half flower. Then another one over here. I'm making the red flowers slightly smaller than the others just to vary them around. I don't want them all to look exactly the same. And maybe with the red, since there's so much space, we'll do five, one, two, four, and five. Let me hold it up for you guys. And that is how many red flowers we added. Most of them are incomplete flowers and that's just okay because we want to fill in and just give, the, uh, give a look of color. We want the color to be spread around. We want some pink, some red, some blues, and we want to define the heart shape. Are we guys done with this much? I think we're okay. good. Now let's go ahead and we'll start adding, I think we'll add leaves first before we add more flowers. So we'll use the green which is P177. So the leaves again, follow the curve and fill in the curve. You want to make sure that, you want to make sure that there are no gaps on this line that you've drawn. This white gap, I'll put a leaf there. There's another white gap, let's put a leaf there. When we fill the entire line, you'll be able to see the heart shape very well on the card. So that's what we're doing here now. We're adding the green leaves, one green leaf here. Same strokes that we used earlier, one line and another line, same strokes in a much smaller scale if you need to actually. And again, you can vary the sizes of the leaf, make them larger if you want, make some smaller to fit in the space. Just have fun and doodle the colors. The colors go down so beautifully. The green is just so vibrant, I love it. Once I've finished almost all of the border, I'll go in and add a few more leaves
Again, depending on what you've lettered in the middle or if you've not lettered, you might have more space. So just make sure you have a pleasing arrangement of color. Look at your illustration and see, okay, there's no green over here. Maybe add a little more green over there. Just simple things like that. And each leaf is just two strokes. One, two, and that's it, we're done. We can add more, but I think we'll go to the next color and come back if we need to. I, I like to add that. blue. Yes, can you pull it up to the camera um, for just a second so people can see it closer again? Awesome. There you are. Thank I'm you. I'm thinking to just prop, if I can prop this up a little bit, maybe it'd be easier. I think you're good. I think you're good. We'll go with the blue again. The blue, you guys, same leaf strokes, the small round shape, just like we did in the previous card. And we're going to fill this not fill it in, but you're going to add the blue leaves just to fill in color. Just fill up all the white spaces. One blue leaf. There's some of the edge here. Another blue leaf. Another blue leaf. If you don't like the blue, you can always add the gray or any of the different color that you'd want. I like the pop of blue. The blue is really vibrant here, especially. It's a rich blue that looks beautiful on the, color, on the paper. So one more blue, maybe one more here. And then stop to look, so this area looks kind of empty. Add another one there. And then maybe another one here. Another smaller one here. So you, you can vary the shape, have some to be larger, have some being smaller. So at this point, if you see, I've almost all, almost completely defined my heart shape. There's no white space along the edges. The whole line that I drew in pencil is completely covered and that'll help define the heart shape on the card. You can use smaller strokes if you need to just go in there and fill in the area, but make sure this whole area has no white space. You can have a little white space in the center when we're done, but this is what's gonna make the heart pop off the page, pop off the card. All right, then we have purple color. I try to use all the color in the palette. I have fun, that's, that's my fun. So I'm using P606. I'm gonna add simple, small flowers here, which are just literally three strokes. One, two, three. Or you can add it as one, two, three, four, five. Depending on what you're comfortable with. I can draw that in a larger scale too. One, two, three, four, five. It looks more like a flower in the smaller scale. So don't worry about it. Just simple, simple strokes. I like doing three or five, or you can just add like scribbles. That is also a flower shape. So I'll just add small purple flowers in any area that I see that is white now. So with the brush tip and this small scale, it looks very flower-like. You can leave space around the sentiment if you want to. I kind of draw the flower all around the sentiment and the sentiment is pretty hidden in mine. I don't like to leave white space. So I'm just gonna continue with that manner here. One, two, three. So I'm adding a lot of purple flowers because it's smaller in size. And I think that looks pretty good. Maybe one here as well. Just simple brush strokes. This is also known as like the dew. I don't know what it's called. You just press your marker down and you get like a petal shape. So just like that, I'm just adding small strokes. After the purple, I'm using the brown. So the brown I'm using to add smaller, tiny leaves. Same leaf, the same, the same, uh, same leaf shape, just smaller in size. So the smaller size allows you to fill in more areas that you can't use with, for the larger, like you can't draw a larger leaf in some areas, especially like this. So just add small strokes of color, which look leaf-like. Add them in bunches in three of you like if you need to. And I, would, I use it just to fill in. They look like berries sometimes. You can think of them as baby breath for a, a flower bouquet. Okay, after the brown, I'm gonna go back to the pink now. With the pink first, I'm gonna draw some buds. So near the pink flower, just go in and add three buds. So the way I drew each bud was like, I started 
and I go back. And it's a smaller scale, so it just covers itself. Just simple teardrop shapes. So I have three here, then maybe a couple here, a couple here. Wherever you feel like there's no pink on the page, go ahead and add it. Maybe some here as well. And while I have my pink out, I will go in and add a second layer of color to my flowers. I'll leave a little outline and add a second. I'll show you here closer. So if you see here, this flower and this flower are just a flat pink. But for this flower, I added the center. So I add the center, leaving a little bit of light, a little bit of the light color around it. And that adds a darker center. Again, just adding some pink details. I'll add some pink details to the petals as well. I realize this is smaller in scale for you to see from there. So I just go on top of each of these and add some in the center. It doesn't have to be precisely that shape. You just want two colors in the flower, a darker center and a lighter outer, center, outer petal. You can go over it once more and add a third layer as well. And that just adds a lot of detail to this and makes it look more rich in color. So I'll show you the pink flower here. So I've added three layers to the pink flower here, and you can easily see it here, especially once it dries, it dries very beautifully, and there's so much depth to it. It's a simple technique, just using one marker. If you want to, you can go over it once more and add more detail to it. You can keep layering colors, the paper doesn't peel, and that's so much, that is one of the best things to do with alcohol markers. So with the ABT Pros, I try to use the, when I use the 12 pack, I try to use all of the colors like I told you before. So I'm gonna take the brown color, this is P992, and just add some more leaf-like strokes in between wherever I see white space. So at this point, I'm just filling in the card. I don't want any white space around it. And this acts like another small filler of flower. Just small strokes, fill it in. The gray color, with the gray color, I think I'll just come in and add more details to the blue flowers. It's a very simple illustration. So any kind of detail you add on top just enhances it. And this color palette looks very modern. I would never think of adding blue leaves with the gray center, but when I do it on paper, it just, it just looks so cute. Moving to the green, just adding another layer of color on top. Just small strokes for the leaves. Again, I'm not completely covering them. I'm just adding the green stroke in the center of each of them. That's it. And I might go over the blue ones, add some more details to those. And add some details to the red flowers. All of these are optional. Once you have the shape defined, you can call it done and just leave it at that. Or you can go in and add a few more details. I'm gonna add a few details to the pink buds. So how I'm doing it is I'm just adding a line of red at the bottom of each of the bud there. And I'll show you that here as well. What I do is I draw the petal, but the the flower buds I've drawn are like a circle, circle, and circle, just like this. And I add red, red, red on top. If you want, you can draw a red stalk there. And that is as simple as how it goes. Just that little contrast of color. Let me see here. Just that little contrast of color adds a nice pop to it. I'm almost done here, actually. We will go in with the red and add centers to the red, to the pink flower. All of the pink flower centers. I'll add some lines and stalks here. I'll take the brown, add some centers to the red flower. And the final thing that I like to do is 
you see there's just a little tiny space in between all of the elements. I'll show you. I like to just go in and add small, tiny flecks of, green, of the green color. Just tiny, tiny flecks with the chisel tip. So I take the green marker with the chisel tip and I just go on adding dots in any white space I see in between. You can add as little or as much as you want, but just be consistent. Don't add too many of them in one area and leave another area white. You can call it done before this if you need to, but I like to add a few dots and just fill the entire thing so that the white and the heart contrast really nicely. Just add some dots. Almost done. And to add the dots, all I'm doing is I'm just using a tapping motion. I got one up, one up, that's it. And I use the nice, I use the chisel tip. In the chisel tip, I use this edge. And I just go dot, 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 haphazardly. And that's about it. You can go in and add more layers of color if you need to. Like here I've had a, a few more layers, but this much, this one is pretty much done, I think. I like the pink flower as well. These are just simple doodles, fill in a shape and it looks nice on a car. Like I said, this will bleed through, but not so much on this paper. You can see it a little bit. And if you want, you can also stick a piece of paper on this side, a cardstock trim to size. And that's it. Let me know if you have any questions, guys. You can also go in with the mono drawing pen and add little details to your flowers. I like to do that, but many people don't like doing it. Some people like adding uh, broken lines on top. That looks beautiful as well. Just add any more black. The black kind of ties in all of the colors nicely and gives a unique gives a uniform cohesive look. This is awesome, Smitha. It looks so good. Thank you. Did any of you guys create anything along with me? You can share your screens, I think. Can they? Yeah, yeah. Everyone hold up what you created. We want to see. Oh, look, Elizabeth Watson's looks amazing. Look at that. Wow. Okay, I have to go through and look at all of them. Beautiful. Whoa. These are so good, you guys. Hi, you guys. Hi, Beth. This is awesome. Oh, pretty. You guys are so beautiful. <laughs> we have some artists oh, here today. Stars. This is great. Oh, there are so many of them. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, and I like Annette. She has a cross. That's cool. Yes. Great There's job, everyone. I saw a love you card. There are so many cards. Wonderful, you guys. I'm yes. sorry if I went to the list. So, I've been told that. If, Go ahead, um, <laughs> if, if any of you guys have uh, been using the ABT Pro, then we would love for you to go to michaels.com and leave a review on the ABT Pro. Uh, that way other people can know more about the uh, product too when they go to buy it. Um, and the replay will be available tomorrow at Michael's website. Um, thank you, Smitha, so much for teaching us all about the ABT Pro. This was so fun. Thank you, Brittany, for having me. Thank you guys for drawing along. I mean, I feel so inspired looking at all of your work. So many of you have created such beautiful things. Make sure to share them all with us on social media. Tag us, Michael Stores, Tomba USA, and Smitha Kati. And we would love to see and comment on them. Thank you so much, guys, for coming and joining us today. I hope you had fun making some cards and happy crafting for the rest of the weekend. No, it's still Thursday. Happy <laughs> crafting. <laughs> Bye. Bye, you guys.